Okay, so in this video, we're going to look over another free response question off of the AP Calc exam. This particular question was only on the BC version of the exam, and it was question number two. So that means that students got to use calculators on it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the introduction to the problem. So let f be a function having derivatives of all orders for all real numbers. The third degree Taylor polynomial for f about x equals 2 is given here. Okay, doesn't sound that bad. So part A asks to find f of 2 and f double prime of 2. Well, I've already written down the summation notation for the Taylor series, so let's take a look at it. I have the k if derivative of x at wherever it's centered divided by k factorial times x minus a to the k. So if I can think about that, how it applies to this, I know that the first term that's all by itself, just a constant, is going to be my actual function value. Right? Because if I plug in k equals 0, I get the original function, and then x minus a to the 0 is 1. So I don't have any x's. So that means f of 2 has to be 7, right? Because it's just, just the number there. All right. Now let's think about f double prime. We can notice in the polynomial that we're given that we actually don't have a first order term. We don't have anything that's just x. It jumps right to x squared. So I know for f double prime, I'm going to be looking at this term right here. Well, let's think about what the coefficient is for a second order term. So it's the second derivative of f divided by 2 factorial. So that means 9 is f double prime over 2, making f double prime at 2, 18. Oh, negative 18, right? Because it's subtracting 9. OK, so that's everything I need for a. Let's move on to b. It's a lot of words. <laughs> So B asks if there's enough information to determine whether x has a critical point at x equals 2. f has a critical point at x equals 2. And if not, explain why not. And if so, determine whether f of 2 is a relative minimum, maximum, or neither, and explain. A lot of stuff to do. First, let's think about how we could tell that there's a critical point at x equals 2. Well, one way is the derivative at f of f at 2 should be 0. And we should have the derivative at 2 in our Taylor polynomial. It would be a coefficient of x minus 2. But we don't have a first order term here. So that means that the derivative must have been 0. So I'm going to say, yes, I do have a critical point. And if I was actually taking this on the exam, I would definitely write this all out. You know, yes, there's a critical point at x equals 2 because the first derivative of f at 2 is 0. I don't have that kind of room. OK, so we're not going for if not. So if so, determine whether f of 2 is a min, max, or neither. Well, how could I figure that out? One way is obviously to look at the graph of the function, but I don't have that. Um, but I could check the second derivative, right? And if the function is concave up, I have a minimum. Concave down, I have a maximum. So I just need to check the sign. And I already found my second derivative to be negative 18, which means the function is concave down. So it looks like that. And I have a max. So again, I would say y. You know, the function has a relative maximum at f equals 2 because the second derivative is negative and the function is concave down. Cool. Let's move on to part C. So part C asked me to first use the Taylor polynomial to approximate the function at 0. Well, I know that I can just kind of plug in 0 for the Taylor polynomial, and I'll get an approximation of what the function value is. So let me go ahead and do that. So 
So I have 7 minus 9 times negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 to the third. So plug this in your calculator if you want. I'm going to do it by hand. So. Eight. So I have 7 minus 36 plus 24, 7 minus 12, negative 5. Okay, so that's my approximation for f at 0. And now it also asks the same question as part b. I wrote that really well. Um, but I can read it to you again. So is there enough information to determine whether f has a critical point at x equals 0? If not, explain why not. If so, determine if it's a relative maximum, minimum, or neither, and explain. Well, we know that a Taylor polynomial is only really good and accurate when we're actually at the value that it's centered at. So here, 0 is too far away from 2 for us to get a good estimate on any of the derivatives of f. So I'm going to say no. There's not enough information to decide where there's a critical point at x equals 0 because the Taylor polynomial is only a good fit for x at the center. So you would just want to write that all out if you were taking the exam. OK, so now let's look at part d. And it's a lot of words, but here they are. So the fourth derivative of f, of f satisfies the inequality given. So the fourth derivative of f absolute value is less than or equal to 6. So for all x, oh, for all x in the closed interval 0 to 2, use Lagrange error bound on the approximation to f of 0 found in part c to explain why f of 0 is negative. OK. So we remember that the Lagrange error bound method is just looking at the next term in the Taylor polynomial. So here I'm given a third order, so I want to look for fourth. OK. Yeah. Too many papers. So, okay. So basically what I've got. Well, I know that at most, the fourth derivative of f at 2 is 6. So I'm going to take that out. OK. So let's just work this out and see what it is. So well, zero, the absolute value of 0 minus 2 is 2 to the fourth is 16. You could probably do this in your calculator. Left mine at home today. OK. So I canceled out a 4, both sides. And now I'm left with 6 divided by 3 factorial times 4. Well, 3 factorial is 6, right? 3 times 2 times 1. So. I have 4 as my Lagrange error bound. So now let's compare that to the function value for 0 that we got. So the actual function value at 0 is going to be less than or equal to the Taylor polynomial approximation plus the Lagrange error bound. Well, this was negative 5, right? And negative 5 plus 4 is negative 1. f of 0 is less than or equal to negative 1, which is always negative. So that shows that f of 0 is going to be negative. So now we've completed all the parts of the problem. Let's take a look at the scoring rubric and see how we did. So for part A, I get two points. 
one for the function value and one for the value of the second derivative. And they have 7 and negative 18. So I get two points for part A and for B. Two points here as well. One for saying that f prime of 2 is 0. I did that. And another for saying that f of 2 is a relative maximum because the second derivative of f is less than 0. Said that one too. So, two more points. Let's check out C. So, there are three points for C. The first one is for saying that the Taylor approximation of f of 0 is negative 5. And then one for declaring that it's not possible to determine if f has a critical point at x equals 0. We said that. And then one for a reason. And their reason is that the Taylor polynomial of x gives exact information only at x equals 2. And that's pretty much what we said. So we got all three points for c. Now let's take a look at d. So here I have two points. One for the value of the Lagrange error bound, which was 4, and one for an explanation, which they have f of 0 is less than or equal to t of 0 plus 4, f of 0 is less than or equal to negative 1, and it's always negative. So we're doing good on that. We got two points. And we're done. So I hope this gives you a better idea of how to tackle those Taylor series FRQs on the exam.